Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to be talking about the Momentum Reversal Lift Turbine Array project, uh, rolls right off the tongue. Uh, this is a collaboration between the universities of uh, Exeter and Edinburgh. I've actually only been working on this project for about eight weeks, so it's going to be a pretty high-level overview. Um, before this, I was working on the REDAP project that Peter Stansby mentioned earlier on. I might say a quick word about that at the end if there's time. So just a quick uh, tip of the cap to colleagues, who most of whom know more about this project than me. So Edinburgh, there's myself, Tom Bruce, and uh, Stephanie Ordnez, who's now left us to go back to the University of Strathclyde, but we're still speaking to her, particularly because she's provided, uh, provided some photos for this presentation. Um, on the Exeter side, we've also recently lost uh, Mill Allen, which is a great shame, because he was uh, uh, very good on the CFD side. And it's Michael Belmont, who's the PI down there as well. Uh, so what am I going to talk about today? I'm going to give you a brief uh, overview of the project uh, and the structure of it. Um, a bit of a look at this turbine design, so it's all based around this cross-flow uh, turbine that Exeter have developed. A um, quick chat about the CFD and numerical models that are being worked on down there. And the physical scale model tests that have already been done uh, by Steph at Ephraimair and the impending tests at Flowwave, which are happening in a week's time. Uh, so the structure of the project actually goes right back to 2008. Um, Exeter got some uh, money from the Technology Strategy Board to develop this concept for a cross-flow turbine. And the Supergen uh, funding for this current stretch of the project started in 2012, and that was to look at using CFD to model the array effects and to do some experimental work to validate that. So the motivations originally for this turbine design um, so some standard ones in there that you always get. So high efficiency, low cost, in this case particularly in terms of infrastructure and installation, uh, that it be robust. Um, but the particular quirk of this model is that it's designed for shallow estuary applications. And I've got a slide coming up about how it actually works, but essentially it's lift and drag in, in combination with uh, each blade rotating within the rotation of the whole device. Uh, so the goals of this, the Supergen project are to do this array optimization within CFD, to do some numerical work, uh, also looking at array optimization but at less computational cost, and to uh, verify this through experiments. So this is, this is the, the turbine, um, so you can see it's a cross-flow device. This is uh, actually upside down to the one that our models use, but that's okay. Um, and just to sort of show how that works without having to do a YMCA dance, uh, I've got a little picture of how the blades go around in rotation. Uh, so if you imagine the flow coming from left to right, uh, you've got one blade that starts off vertical at the top, so that's basically acting as a drag plate. You've got one at the bottom that's acting as kind of more normal um, lifting surface, and you've got another one that's in the shadow of that, so hopefully you're minimizing the effects uh, of that blade on the rotation. So as that rotates round uh, clockwise, you can see that um, by the third uh, graphic there, you've got the blade at the bottom is perfectly horizontal, therefore minimizing the drag effects against the rotation. And by the final frame there, where we're through a third of the rotational cycle, we're essentially back to where we started with blade two replacing blade one, if you like. So that's how the model works. Um, I'm going to talk very briefly about the CFD because it's uh, not my field of expertise. Um, but essentially the whole CFD project has been looking at different array layouts, starting with um, a single turbine and making sure they can model that correctly and validating that against some experimental work and then moving on to array layouts and changing spacings. And this is looking at a change in uh, body force. So this is a, a model that basically takes energy out of the flow for a given turbine. These are NBF is normalized body force, so this is just um, scaled. So the maximum one at the top there, you can see in the immediate wake, um, the velocities are a lot slower, but you get increased mixing and the wake recovery is much faster. Going down to the bottom one where less energy has been taken out of the flow, so the wake is propagating further downstream. And that's from a paper that you can find with the reference at the bottom there if you're interested. Um, I've kind of been a bit of a coward here and I got sent these very long CFD abstracts that I um, wasn't willing to bullet point up, but I will try and paraphrase them now. So these are the two um, papers that Exeter have produced since the last Supergen meeting that are currently in review. Uh, so one's on surrogate modeling. So this is all about using CFD to teach the numerical model to get the right outcomes. So you basically run it through a whole different um, set of conditions with different turbine spacings and different types of turbine and the idea is that you teach it to get the right results so eventually you can run it without the CFD and you cut the computational cost. Uh, they also do some non-linear systems modeling which I don't understand as well but essentially it's a framework that allows you to do a lot of scalability within the same methodology and 
Uh, on the CFD stuff, I'll point you in the direction of Michael Belmont if you want to ask more questions on it. Um, I've already mentioned very briefly the numerical modeling side of things. So as well as the surrogate model, they are doing some array optimization layout in, in their own right, and I can point you towards the right people for that as well. So I'll go on to the physical testing, which uh, is more my domain. So this is the scale model that's been developed to represent this turbine. Uh, it's about 300 mil by 200 mil. Um, and you can see that we've got side plates that create some very local blockage effects. And we are measuring the rotational speed via uh, the encoder you can see on the side there. And we have a damper at the top, and that is um, representing our power takeoff. And we can, we've got a set of uh, gear ratios that we can use to um, adjust the, the rotational speed that we get off the turbine. Uh, so Stephanie's already done some tests out in Ephemer, so thank you to her for these uh, photos. So I'll just take you through a couple of these quickly. So here's uh, one turbine being used. Um, I mentioned at the start that ideally these are for shallow water applications. Um, obviously it's quite difficult to find the right scale of tank for doing that, so this is a little bit deeper than is um, preferable, but we're using it near the surface and um, to try and at least get the blockage in one of the, one of the vertical dimensions. So looked at some single uh, turbines and we looked at some um, array effects. There's uh, four staggered in there. There's one right at the back, if you can just about make out the, the clamps for that. Um, with Star Wars coming up, we've got the um, obligatory lightsaber picture, the LDV behind the spinning turbine. And um, yeah, so the main things we were looking at in this uh, work were the power generated by the individual turbines for a set of different gear ratios to see what was, what was the best, what was giving us the maximum power output, looking at the wake recovery for all those different settings and making sure that that matched up with what we were seeing in the CFD. And we started looking at some basic, basic array tests for this work going forward. And I've got a little video um, of this in motion. This is just the LDV behind the, the turbine looking at the, the wake effects from one turbine. And so I was saying um, we were looking at a comparison between that and the, the CFD results. So aside from the upstream velocity um, being a bit lower, um, in the actual wake itself we've got quite good agreement between the experimental results and for the 0.91 uh, body force and that work is I believe in the paper that's in review at the moment so hopefully that will be released early next year. Uh, on to imminent work so uh, on Monday I'm flying down to Exeter to do all the final preparation work and then in a week's time we'll be in Flowwave um, doing tests of up to 15 of these scale models in a big big array setup. Um, I've just got some very quick pictures of the, the frame that we're using here so Essentially, within each of these three ladders, which we can move both uh, streamwise and transversely, so we can quite quickly uh, change downstream separation and to go from staggered and inline um, array layouts. And within each ladder itself, we can move the turbines closer together or further apart. So it's all about varying the spacing and seeing what the effect on power output is. Um, and that's just the same image, but bolted into uh, Flowwave's raisable floor. And yeah, there's a very quick couple of uh, possible array layouts, well, probable array layouts that we will look at, um, and focusing on inline and staggered, and then varying the uh, spacings in between those. Just before I go to questions, um, I will say that just on my previous project, this is something that uh, we always get asked a lot, so uh, the Redap project, which recently finished, has uh, over four years, has collected a a lot of flow data from the fall of ONS site at EMEC, and that data will shortly be going online, which is available for anyone to use. Uh, so if you're interested in having a whole set of current and particularly turbulence data, do get in touch and we can sort you out with that as well. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.